Hi everybody, welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Julie. Today is the first day of the 2020 Summer Reading Program, Imagine Your Story. I don't think any of us could have, could have imagined that we would have a summer reading program like this, where we're not seeing each other face to face. I want you to know that I miss you, I miss your smiles and your big hugs, and I, I think about you all the time. I am still at the library working very hard on your summer reading program. Um, you can sign up today for the summer reading program by clicking on the link in this post. So you can read at home and we will still give away prizes like we usually do. We will still have um, story times. We'll have them Monday through Friday all the way until the end of the summer reading program. On Mondays, I plan to read Mo Willems books. Today's book by Mo Willems is called Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. I hope you like it. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs by Mo Willems. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs, Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud booming voice. It is finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. <laughs> yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are, uh, Someplace else. <laughs> then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Just then, the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded a lot like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur! The trap is not yet sprung! But that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks, it, Goldilocks ate it all anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. 
Soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room, so she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. But the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What, what is going on around here? groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming voice that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious, chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, Now! or Charge! or the Norwegian expression for Chewy Bon Bon Time! Suddenly and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. But they were too late. Goldilocks was gone. And all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. And the moral is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And the moral for dinosaurs is, lock the back door.